Okay, so in this video, we want to look at the buoyant force of a partially submerged object. So in the last video, we were looking at this object that was fully submerged under water, and we figured out how this buoyant force, which is the mass of the water displaced times gravity, or in other words, the weight of the water displaced, is equal to this buoyant force. And if you remember, the buoyant force is equal to the forces at the bottom of the object minus the force at the top of the object. And these two forces right here are induced by the pressure caused by the liquid above and below the object. So for an example, F sub bottom, which is this force right here, is equal to the pressure at the bottom times the surface area at the bottom of that object. So this box right here was just the space where this object was. So this is the amount of water that got displaced. And F bottom was P bottom times A. So you might be wondering, well, what about an object that is just partially submerged? So in this example right here, we have the water line right here. And we have this block sitting in the water. And this block is halfway submerged. So half of the block is underwater, and half of the block is above water. And you might be asking, well, how do we figure out the buoyant force of this object, or the buoyant force acting on this object? Well, again, the buoyant force is always the uh, force at the bottom of the object due to the water minus F top. So I'm going to rewrite or redraw this diagram here on the right. And this is basically the amount of water that got displaced. So this space or this volume right here is this volume. Remember, buoyant force is only the weight of the fluid that got displaced. So this volume is not going to be the full volume of the box. Instead, it's just going to be the amount of water that got displaced. So that's what this is. So if I were to call this block a height of d, then on the right side here, I know this height would be d over 2. So that would be h. In other words, h is going to be the distance from the surface of the water down to this bottom. OK, cool. So just like in the last video, on this displaced amount of water, this block right here, we have two forces. One, which I'll call F sub bottom, and the top, which I'll call F sub top. And both of these forces is equal to the pressure of the fluid times the area. So at the bottom, it's going to be pressure of the bottom times area. And on the side here, remember, pressure is equal to rho g h. So this is not the h that I have drawn here, but h is simply the distance uh, from the surface line down to the point that we're studying. So you can see right here, at least for f top, that p top is going to be 0. Why? Because that distance is 0. The surface is right here. And the point that we're studying is along that surface. So the distance between those two things is 0. So if this is 0, then that means this pressure is 0. And if this pressure is 0, then that means this f top is 0. OK, cool. Well, what about f bottom? So what about this right here? So we have p bottom times a. And a is just the surface area of that surface. So it's going to be that area right there. And pressure bottom is, I'm going to write here, Pressure bottom is the mass density of the fluid that got displaced, in this case, water, times g, our gravitational constant, times h, which in this case is d over 2. OK, cool. So that means f bottom here is rho times g times h times a. So that is this f bottom force. And remember. Our buoyant force is equal to the difference between the force at the bottom and the force at the top. So f bottom, or f buoyant force, is equal to f bottom minus f top. And we already know that f top is equal to 0. So this leaves us with mass density of water times g times h times a. 
and that is the buoyant force. Now, this term right here, these two variables right here, h and a, well, that's volume, right? Area times height is equal to volume. So I'm going to rewrite this as mass density of water times g times the volume of the water that got displaced. So that volume is all of this. OK, cool. So we're this far. Now I want to take this a little bit further. So I'm going to rewrite this down here just to make it uh, cleaner. So the buoyant force is equal to the mass density of the water times g times the volume of the water that got displaced. Now, if you remember, mass density is equal to the mass over volume. And we can rewrite this as mass is equal to rho times volume, right? If we just multiplied v on both sides, we get this right here. And now I can substitute rho and v in this equation right here. So the buoyant force is now equal to, well, rho times v is m. So the mass of the water that got displaced times gravity. And well, what do you know? Mass times gravity, that is weight in this case. So the weight of the water. So here you can see that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the water that got displaced. So just like the previous video, uh, it doesn't matter what the object really is. It just matters how much water or liquid it displaces. So in this case, it displaced this entire amount of liquid. It was fully submerged, but the buoyant force was still the mass of the water that got displaced times gravity. And in this case, for a partially submerged block, it's the same thing. Our buoyant force is equal to the mass of the water that got displaced times gravity.